through these five shots of film void spaces below shots also Yasujiro introduces us to the city of Onomichi where the elder couple of the film lives The pillow shots that Ozu films usually show by means of steel frames, architecture void of occupants, empty exteriors, or urban and natural landscapes. Shanta Lackerman Films, empty rural sceneries in Jasper, Texas, in an attempt to find, with her camera, what lays hidden behind the apparent calm. Twenty-seven years separate. This film Void Spaces, by James Benin, in the Industrial Valley of Milwaukee. As a child, I used to play there. In 1977, the valley began to die. The factories were taken to other places. The steel foundries were rusting away. I wanted to document this decadence. Using my friend's family and three Volkswagens, I created 60 narratives, each one minute long. Then, 27 years later, I decided to make the same film again. I found the 60 original camera positions and most of my old friends and family, everything, had changed with time. Some people had died, some buildings had disappeared. I used the same soundtrack from the original film, adding the new images. It is a film about memory and fading. Thirty-eight years later, José Luis Guerin returned to Ireland in pursuit of the imprints that John Ford's film, The Quiet Man, had left on Castleton and its surroundings. Well, then. Now, I'll begin at the beginning. Through a fine, soft day in the spring, it these case studies of a series of films made throughout the second half of the 20th century all of which shared the common characteristic of showing film void spaces. This study reflects upon the idea of film as a device that transforms the viewer's perception of these film void spaces. Through cinema, these film void spaces stop being perceived by the viewer as abstract, opaque and illegible to become a place of memory, precise, with its semantic, historic, emotional and material load bleeding through the surface of the shot. In Ozil's films, the empty shots work as semantically available areas. 
suspended spaces where the echo of all that is capturing the film located in an elusive plane of the unsaid reverberates with the subtle mechanism Ozu underlines the force of the absent beings the impression of absence is manifested through the objects, architecture, spaces, and landscapes. Ackerman positions us as observers of a scene from the point of view of the three assassins, who in a racist rage chained James Beard Jr. to the back of a car and dragged his body for more than three kilometers. And this is when the steadiness and consistency of the shot and the insistence in the length become necessary in order to re-establish the descriptive and commemorative dimension of the record We can find in Uyet Strop's work the same determination to inhabit the image by invoking the absent ones. The geographical materialistic process used by Uyet Strop shows the traces, tracks, and sediments, as well as the absence of this, from a past that emerges to the surface of the screen. In a similar way as in Ackerman film, the painful fluctuations between the absence and the presence of tracks is essential for its own strength. All of the sounds, from the most infinitesimal to the quietest one, identify a crime, the crime scene, the dirt, the victims, the peasant, the witness, the landscape, which is clouds, roads, weeds, wind. Ackerman makes us see through the point of view, just for a few minutes, of the assassins that hung James Beard Jr., transforming our perception after being, for a moment in time, a mute accomplice to the murder. We could drive along the same road again, follow James Beard Jr. that path, dragged for more than three kilometers by a truck driven by three young white men and even 
If the body parts are only marked on the asphalt by the white line of a meticulous detective, what is lonely drawn when the final shot takes us through the bends of this never-ending three miles becomes all of the violence in the world. With still camera frozen on the pale road. The crickets continue to pace the beauty of the surroundings, distracting us, the cars, rushed by us, bothered by us. We will endure until the end, drawn by Chantal Ackerman's determination, by cinema's unquestionable cholera. With each film, we try to propose a method. There is only one person that considered the method. In trop tôt, trop tard. Developing it in her own way. That was Chantal Ackerman. In all of Uyet Strop's films, and for that matter, in Ackermans as well, there is an active combination of two passions, politics and aesthetics, the first, based on hate, the second, based on love. In their films, hate fuels political passion, and love fuels aesthetic passion. If there is an actor in Trop Tôt, Trop Tard, it is undeniably the landscape. There are landscapes, and we have worked with them just as if they were a character. Nobody has ever filmed the landscape for a film, and later has stopped as if caressing it, as if they were actual characters. This actor, the landscape, has a text to recite, that of history, the peasants that resist, the land that stays, which it has witnessed and survived. The cloud that passes by. Birds that fly off, trees bending in the wind, a clearing in the sky. This is what the landscape's performance as an actor consists on. This kind of performance is a meteorological one. Seeing and hearing at the same time in certain moments, 
We look before we listen. Other times, first we listen, then we look. Image and sound are synchronic and nonetheless, neither instant. Every individual can create a personal experience depending on how one processes the sensations. In this sense, this film is a sensational one. It is not about the melancholic investigation of the wreckage, but about returning to the enigma of time and space, formalizing these images and what ties us to them now. I consigli comunali delle Apuane, dove 23 anni prima Reder e i suoi ammazzarono centinaia di persone si pronunciano contro la richiesta di Grazia dopo il comune di Marzabotto. All of these topologic panoramic shots, all of these landscapes, filmed after an extensive topographic excavation, carried out in order to establish the strategic point height and proportion, in order to never modify the horizon line. Unearth the hidden ghosts of our history. The victims are dead forever. It would be terrible to say or see the contrary, and nonetheless, the reach of the mountain and the Strobian horizon are mesmerizing. Mysteriously, it brings back what had been taken from them, not the bodies, that will never revive, but the living and deadly desire for those sounds and images from one generation to another. However much the camera pans across the landscape, no visible. Trace of the crime remains, and yet, the Strobian shot insists. Something happened on those hills. Something is buried under those rocks. It is essentially these landscapes, layered, emptied, and scared, where the movement of Uyet Strop's camera draw the abstract curve of what happened and where the dirt assumes the value of what is buried below it when asked, what is a Strobian shot? The answer can be, as if a stratigraphic manual that it is a cut that encloses the dotted line of disappearing layers and the continuous lines of the remaining tangible layers. 
In Uyet Straub's work, the visual image is the rock, a shot, that becomes a burial ground, because it conceals something beneath the dirt. Forgotten stories that bodies and traces of spilled blood by violent acts, oppression and injustice. Each shot that we see, each tree that we see, can't help but evoke a past where, from those trees, bodies hung. It is with the story of the now how I evoke the past, in fact, it is a to and fro between the present and the past that can only exist in our imaginary, since in the images. Nothing is left to be seen. What is happening right now evokes this past. This proposes some questions. The past carries the present within. And it is because of this past that people now end up hanging a black man. The doorman past condensed in Strop's bioscopic shots. Grave markings, fragments of time sculpted in stone, in landscape, in monuments. And the filmmaker's gesture, outlining or surrounding with a limit. This lack of evidence or these few remaining traces. Deve essere stato mio padre a farmi sostare davanti a quel monumento sul Lungarno e più tardi notai nella pietra dello zoccolo l'orma lasciata da un triangolo massonico di bronzo che i fascisti vi avevano strappato. Within the language of these filmmakers we pass, always, from one bioscopic shot to another bioscopic shot, that is, from one pure block of condensed present to another pure block of condensed present. The cinematographic shot is conceived as the indestructible union between image and sound. Every image carries its own sound within. A cinema of time is chosen over a cinema of action. A cinema of pure present. Also, has used the present as the unique verb tense in all of his work from the present. He questions, not what has changed, but what has stayed the same. The 14 years that passed between the two series of pillow shots were decisive for the social, political, urban, architectural and cultural transformation in Japan. This time lapse is captured, translated, into pure visual form within these images. Ozu's pillow shots have the power to transmit a dimension of time that not only inserts us into the different places in the frame, but also evoke the alluded due to its rich polysemic nature, even without being symbolic. The transformations conducted in this film operate in the viewer's perception, transforming its scenes. It would be within the viewer's own mind as an active subject, where the change from film void spaces to places of memory will take place. It is a direct consequence of the inner characteristics of the cinematographic device itself, which, understood by our filmmakers, can be summarized into the following points. Duration, non-reconciliation, Resistance, insistence, repetition. Ability to materialize feelings, emancipation. 
of the senses, non-symbolism, literalism. Formal precision and rigor, cartographic potential of cinema. Double transfiguration, both, in the viewer's perception and in the image sound itself. Acceptance of anachronism, filming from the present. Impossible dissociation of the image and synchronic sound. Autonomy of each shot. Throughout Tokyo Monogatari, we follow the elder couple's journey within the big city. Upon returning home, the grandmother falls ill. It will be during the length of these shots that she will die. After all the audiovisual experiences throughout the film, these same images, seen in the beginning as a side plan now, under different circumstances, with distinct mood and state of mind, adopt a completely new meaning. They are no longer, only. Filmed void spaces, they are, now, as well. Places of memory, 